Hello, hello, and welcome back to the workbook for students here in A Course in Miracles. I'm Tomas Garza, and thank you so much for joining me. We're at a really special lesson. In fact, they're all special, every single one, wherever you are in this process, if you're working through it, they're all special lessons. But today, numerically, is cool. It's cool because we've arrived at lesson 200 today, and we're about to enter into another review period, and they're all different. The next one is very exciting because it will rip away one of the foundational principles of the ego. It'll just erode it away, and if you practice it, you'll go a long way toward setting that false concept of self totally to the side, which is what we're all going for. So today we're at lesson 200 and lesson 200, we'll just jump right into it, states there is no peace except the peace of God. Hmm. That's pretty much all there is to say. But, you know, this video is not going to grind to an abrupt halt without a little commentary on that. There is no peace but the peace of God. So the peace that you're looking for in the world outside of you, in other words, in money, for example, in status, in the world, in a brand new Mercedes-Benz or a used Toyota pickup doesn't matter. Everything that you're looking for outside of yourself is not, in fact, the peace that you're looking for. This will threaten the ego. Good. We'll allow this to threaten the ego. And in, invitation is crystal clear. Crystal clear to question this. Please, by all means, you should be questioning everything that this course says and holding it up not to a scientific rational scrutiny, but the scrutiny of your own experience and your own intuition, your own gut feeling. What does your heart tell you? What does your gut tell you? Does this resonate? with me, ask yourself, does this resonate with me? Do these really simple one sentence ideas resonate with me on some level? And anyone who reaches this point, lesson 200 in the workbook has to have at some point concluded that yes, there's some grain of truth in there. There's some resonance in there, even if it's just for a moment. The voice for God, the Holy Spirit, asks only for a little willingness on your part, just a little willingness, a glimpse, a moment, a fraction of time where you let your guard down and allow your teacher to take the reins. Just a little willingness, the Holy Spirit floods in. Now, you may call the voice for God, the universal inspiration, friend with a capital F, the Holy Spirit, whatever you choose to call it. And one of the great benefits and beautiful things about this course is that it does not matter whether you're following this course or not. You can still make use of this idea and all of the ideas in the workbook. You do not have to adopt A Course in Miracles as your main spiritual practice as the foundational centerpiece. Some people do, some don't. The, these lessons, these ideas are universal 
they apply to every living thing and you may use them. People use them to augment their current path. This happens frequently, all the time. Such is the beauty of a self-study curriculum that does not purport to be the only path. Thank God, right? We don't need more sectarianism in the world. The world has enough. Would you not agree? The world has enough fundamentalism. Would you not, again, agree? There is no peace but the peace of God. Everything that you're striving for in the world may bring some temporary happiness. Money is necessary to buy things. It is necessary to keep a roof over one's head. Yes. It is necessary to keep the electric lights running. Yes. And modernly, it is necessary to pay the cable and internet bill so that one may continue to watch YouTube videos on A Course in Miracles. Most definitely, yes. Will these things, however, bring and procure you lasting happiness? Constant, in other words, constant. And in considering this question, consider the internet with which we communicate with one another. Does it last? No. The electrical power may go out, an underground cable may cease to function, or a storm could come along and a tree could blow down a transformer or a power line in your area, knocking out your power and your internet. They're not constant. <laughs> it would be beautiful indeed if they were, but they're not. True communication flows directly from God to the Son of God. And they're one. One. This, quite naturally, is an idea that's anathema to the ego. The ego wishes to resist this idea for everything that it's worth, which is nothing in truth. Yet the resistance can seem very, very strong. Enter today's idea for practice. There is no peace but the peace of God. We have seen in the workbook that above all else, I want the peace of God. This is a previous workbook idea that we've looked at, and there is no peace but the peace of God. This, in fact, is the very definition of peace, peace that is constant, peace that simply is. It is not dependent on external conditions. It knows no external conditions. The external conditions, such as a treaty between nations, a ceasefire agreement, a political agreement, in previous human history, an arranged marriage between prince and princesses of two different states, nation states. All of these are external and therefore non-existent. Let us all remind ourselves of the summary of A Course in Miracles. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So this, this notion, this lesson, lesson 200 is, is very beautiful, is it not? It's intended for us to return to in the form of practice to light our way as it were, as are all of the ideas in the workbook for students. They're there for you, for me, for all of us to reach for. It's reaching for the light, which 
it's another way of putting this, as kind of the work, is it not? Awareness is recognizing when you've chosen fear and choosing love, reaching for your light. This is a way that you can do this. This is why the workbook for students is arranged in the manner in which it's arranged, where one can return to a very simply stated idea every day and sit with it and practice it. Um, it's less than 200. We're about to go into the 200s here. And we have long since left behind the more formalized, the more stated formality, I should say, of some of the previous lessons where Jesus has us take some time every hour at the top of the hour, or to practice for 15 minutes, or to practice every 15 minutes, or to practice a three minute meditation. I use the word meditation, practice period, if you prefer. Just there is more frequency at the beginning stated so that we can acquire the habit of practice. That is what the workbook for students involves, is acquiring a habit for practice. See, as human beings, we're lazy. Yeah. You may not want to label yourself as lazy, but as a species, yes, we all seek for the easy way out. We want to have all the benefit without doing the work. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit simply inform us that that's impossible. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So periodically, it's worth checking in as you study this material, as you practice this material, and more importantly, as you integrate it into your life by daily application, that you take a pause. And I recommend that if you need this, that you do it. And take a pause and think about you when you began this process. Now we're 200 lessons in over half of the way through the workbook. Now, the goal is not just to run through it, it's to learn, right? So you have come this far. It's worth it every now and then to take a look at your own mind and your own heart right now, today, and assess is it different than when you began? If so, how different? Are you in fact more loving? Are you more patient? Are you more forgiving? Have you made a greater commitment to practicing these ideas? This is a really important and valuable exercise to do. It's self-awareness and it's just checking in with yourself and of course, being honest with yourself. We could say that goes without saying, but it doesn't go without saying because we're not always honest with ourselves, are we? So in all honesty, can you honestly say that you've seen a transformation in the way that you show up, in the way that you comport yourself in the world? Are you more forgiving? Are you more loving? Are you more patient? And if you determine that, yeah, maybe just a little bit, then yeah, keep going. And if you determine that the answer is not yet, keep going. And if you determine that the answer is yes, then especially keep going because you're not done. <laughs> it's a beautiful lesson. There is no peace, but the peace of God. It is the very epitome of peace itself, one could say, it's the definition of peace itself. All right, so where we're going from here is into another period of review with a phrase, you can call it an affirmation, a statement, I simply call it a statement of truth, that you'll practice so much over the next 20 lessons that it will become ingrained in your mind for all time. Now let's all make sure 
that happens and celebrate it as it does because it's a big time liberator. And I know, I know, I just know that you're in the market for that. Are you not? Big time liberation, massive. Yeah. Ready? Join me on the next video.